So he had to so hit more than 12 at the half. Is that what you're telling me? He had 18 at the half, <laughs> as, as was duly noted. I just looked down at his plus yeah. minus. He was plus 12. Nobody would have remembered if you hadn't brought it back up. I wasn't going to call you on it on air. That's all right. 102 to play. Where do you yeah, go, yeah. South Florida? Oh, well, first it starts with Memphis now, picking up pressure, using Nick Jordan. I think for, for South Florida, you got to get back to spacing. That's when they've been at their best. Stroud didn't want to take it. Not a great three-point shooter. Youngblood from Miguel. Well short. Look at Pryor in between three Memphis Tigers. You cannot keep this guy out of the action. And Pryor's going to go to the line for two. Yeah, there's the effort and the energy part of Pryor and his rebounding, but there's just the, the falling asleep, not reading and anticipating. I mean, when you're playing defense, you've got to follow the ball, see man, see ball, simple fundamentals, right? But you've got to anticipate shots going up. You see your man, you know how to keep him off the glass. Pryor's, yeah, outworking, sort of, but he's also anticipating shots well. First of two. Oh, he missed it. His first miss of the game after seven makes. Now, I didn't like where he was. He was occupying the paint, but Nick Jordan, I mean, just late, he just turns his head and gets beat. Those are the things that are inexcusable if you want to be a really good team. Look at the offensive rebounding. It's almost tied, 20 to 21. This is unbelievable. I mean, or 16, 18, excuse me. Tough time with numbers today. Pryor one for two. It's a 73-71 game with 100 seconds left. Jones with 25, Quinterly with 15. No surprise, Memphis is two leading scorers on the season. The two leading scorers on the game. Quinterly got around Jordan, who nearly blocked off his own man. Pryor's on the floor again. Who's a foul on? It was Pryor, be on Pryor. Quinterly. I think yeah. it is Pryor. It's one of the number 11s. Basically diving into the legs of Quinterly. It's Pryor's fourth foul. Pryor. So one and one for Quinterly. Pryor's the guy that you love to play with, hate to play against. And he's been good. It's not a sportsmanship thing. He's just a tough dude. We have other terms for it. Can't really use them. He's going to stop at that. Stop, but no, I, I just this was a big possession because of how effective the zone has been. You want to be able to stick in that zone as long as you can, as long as you're close within maybe one or two. Probably down to the 30, 45 second mark if you're South Florida. One and one for Quinterly, 85% free throw shooter, and he missed it. And Jordan wow. tapped it out. What a big play! Wow. Yeah, David Jones wants it. He likes the matchup. There's going to be help coming, so he's got to be balanced. Pryor's got four fouls. Trying to draw the charge. Jones misses the three. Pryor's got his 10th rebound. And with one minute to go, South Florida has the ball down two. They have three Timeout. timeouts left, and this is a good time to use one. I think if you're South Florida, you, you have to get back to spacing the floor. Memphis has really struggled to defend space, right? Sometimes you have to defend the basketball, but to defend the basketball in space and and space, because there's room to cut, shots goes up, there's room to get to the offensive glass, and that's part of what South Florida's done really well. Because of the spacing on the floor, there's a lot of room. In terms of Nick Jordan having to box out, Casey Pryor has a ton of room to work to the glass. South Florida's greatest strength has been Selton Miguel and Casey Pryor. And if Pryor's the one spacing the floor, there's a lot of room for guards to work. Here Abdurrahim and this South Florida team. They start conference play two and one. Remember, they were two and four to begin the year. They lost to Central Michigan, Maine, Hofstra, UMass. And this is a South Florida team that has not made the NCAA tournament since 2012. They have really been an afterthought most of their time in the American. The vibes are a lot different with Amir Abdurrahim at the helm. This would be one heck of a vibe check. Down two with a minute to go. They get it to the freshman read. I like something they've done before. Kind of a pick and pop into an ISO situation for Pryor. He's good off the bounce. Again, when he's got room, he's tough. Miguel, the leading scorer in the game for South Florida, was looking for Youngblood. Jordan defended him well. Deep in the shot clock, it's Reed. 
It's still Reed. Left handed, he ties it. The first tie of the game, and it's Jaden Reed's first points of the game. Look, playmaking is a lot easier when you have the room to make plays, and all that offense lifted out high, vacates the paint, allows a playmaker to go make something happen. Is this Javon Quinterly's time, as it has so often been this season? Pretty hard. You got a lot of help sitting up there in this zone. Guarded by the freshman Reed. Quinterly takes it and throws it away. And South Florida will have a chance to win this game with 11.5 to go, two timeouts remaining, and a decision for Amir Abdul Rahim, who is not going to use a timeout yet. The inbound is to Selt Miguel. He wants a timeout at half court. He wants court. it across half court. He'll get it right there at 6.3 seconds remaining. And the South Florida Bulls who are 1-26 in their history in road games against the top 10 are one shot away from one of the great regular season wins in this program's history. Selton Miguel has struggled to, to really get by anybody. He's been great shooting jump shots. He's been great around the perimeter. I, I love him as a guy that keeps defense locked on him. So if he plays on ball side, you're going to have room to get to the paint. Look. I I Get to the foul line if you're South Florida. That's something they typically do very well. And a lot of that comes from the fact that, again, Case and Pryor is playing away from the basket. That means every defender is a long, close secondary defender. And that's often, if you're chasing that play, that's where you foul. So I think you set that space as quickly as possible. See, that starts with getting the ball in bounds. But I don't think Memphis can pressure too much and get beat and lose numbers. The other thing is you, you want to give yourself enough time at a possible offensive rebound, but not too much time to give Memphis an opportunity. Memphis 27-2 in its last 29 home games. The losses, one point to Tulane and two points to Houston the last couple of years. They're undefeated here this year. I just... Amir Abdul-Rahim has a really good command on, on, over this group. Obviously, a lot of teaching, a lot of coaching, but, but you're also developing as a mindset to be able to compete at the highest level. That, that they have. It'll be Brandon Stroud to inbound. One timeout apiece if things go awry here on the inbound. Miguel, Youngblood, Reed, and Pryor, the South Florida Five. Stroud looking for an inbound. Has a timeout, doesn't use it. Pryor's all alone, and he is fouled by Tomlin with 4.4 to go. How in the world? Did Memphis lose a 6'10 guy? Well, well, look, it's not just that. Nick Jordan was taking the passes away while he's covering the ball. So it became, watch Nick Jordan. He chases away, and now it's an easy pass. If Nick Jordan's there, that pass isn't that easily thrown. If anything, it's got to be over the top. But Nick Jordan was taking that first pass away. He did it at half court, then took the quarter pass away. Pryor got hit hard in the head, and the officials will review this for a flagrant foul oh, that would be based wild. on what we saw on wild. the other end this certainly could qualify as a flagrant foul if Tomlin hit prior across the head we'll have to see exactly where he did it it looks like they're saying common yeah foul. Doug Shows with a pretty quick review along with Courtney Green common foul I mean that was a game-saving foul that's really what Had that was because you know obviously in that moment you stop the clock you can start talking about what you're going to do miss or make all right, so Penny Hardaway can set up his offense here. Well, and you've got to have, look, you've got to have rebounders, obviously, but, but you also need ball handlers. If there's a rebound, you have to push it up the court. And I would say there's a high probability he at least makes one of two. He's made eight of nine. Saturday, he made 15 of 16. Jason Pryor. Who as deliberate as it comes at the free throw line. Has a chance to give South Florida the lead, shooting the first of two. I just can't believe this comeback. Down 20 in the first half to come back and have a chance to win it on the road at Memphis. South Florida has the lead. First time South Florida's had the lead since it was 7-6. Look at Casey Pryor, man. 21 for him after a 29-point game against Rice Saturday. That was a 12-point comeback at home against Rice. This is 20 
at Memphis. The Tigers have a timeout. Prior second nope. is no good. Rebound Walton. Here's Quinterly. Quinterly's been the game winner twice this year. He does not do it again. An absolute stutter in Memphis. South Florida from 20 down has shocked the top 10 Tigers. Wow. Uh, they're just things that you, you just can't predict. You look at the first half and you say, this thing's really over. Memphis just needs to really put their foot down on the gas and bury their opponent.